Welcome to the St. Michael Easter podcast series. My name is Greg Pickens, and I will be leading our meditation today. Our theme this Easter is Big Love. God's holy work is fulfilled in the resurrection of Christ, the defeat of death itself. We have received the gift of new life, and we can use that gift to spread God's big love to those near and far. Joining Christians everywhere during this Easter season, we proclaim with joy, Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. A reading from Luke chapter 4, verses 38 through 44. After leaving the synagogue, Jesus entered Simon's house. Now Simon's mother-in-law was suffering from a high fever, and they asked him about her. Then Jesus stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. Immediately she got up and began to serve them. As the sun was setting, all those who had any who were sick with various kinds of diseases brought them to him, and he laid his hands on each of them and cured them. Demons also came out of many, shouting, You are the Son of God. But he rebuked them and would not allow them to speak, because they knew that he was the Messiah. At daybreak he departed and went into a deserted place, and the crowds were looking for him, and when they reached him, they wanted to prevent him from leaving them. But he said to them, I must proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God to the other cities also, for I was sent for this purpose. So he continued proclaiming the message in the synagogues of Judea. Here ends the reading. It's clear that Jesus had a successful ministry in Capernaum. The locals loved him, and they were encouraged by his teachings and by his miracles. He healed so many that the elders of the city did not want Jesus to ever leave. Jesus was doing wonderful things, and no doubt his mighty presence was doing a lot to bring people in from all over the region. Having a proven healer was good for any town, but having a worker of miracles, the Son of God, live in the area was amazing. Jesus knew this. Everyone wanted him to be close when he was helping other people. Healing was important to him. It brought him and those being healed closer to the Father. But healing was not his primary mission. Often Jesus said that he had come to seek and save the lost, to reconcile the people to God. This was his primary function. Everything else, the miracles, the signs, the wonders, everything else was a way to demonstrate the power of God, to shock the people into a new reality that God loved them deeply, desired communion with them, and was near to them. Jesus did all sorts of things for the people, and he always enjoyed his interactions with them with few exceptions. But his overarching mission was to do what he was called to do by the Father. That was his ultimate purpose. Often humans will find themselves in a ministry rut. We will volunteer to serve in a certain way and always for the right reasons at the time. It may take some time, but we may get a feeling that Maybe we've learned all that we can in a certain position. Adjustments happen all the time in business and in our personal lives. But for some reason, in ministry, we may believe that we have to stay in a ministry because we have been devoted to it. What our lesson encourages us to do is spend some time thinking about our ministries and to see if God may be calling us to serve in other ways. We are invited to see our different ministries as separate training grounds, offering a variety of learning experiences that will train us to be mature servants. This can be hard to navigate. We cannot just up and leave ministries without preparing them to continue without us. That would lead to chaos. But also, we will have made friends and they will want us to stay just as the townspeople wanted Jesus to linger. 
Take time this Easter season. Talk to ministry leaders and discern where God is calling you. Think about what you have been trained to do and pray about what you are called to do in service of the gospel. And may God bless each of us on this faith journey. Amen. Please join me as we continue with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith, that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.